about. So again, we're a member-led organization. Uh, it's the membership will decide on how we're we going to. Coalition that we're, we're helping us to get up and on their feet, and um, we um, at that time in the in the startup phase we received like incubation and, and sort of like were um, sort of like helped to um, get the ball rolling. And um, at that time we had about um, between six and twelve people that were like um, in. In, in power at the time, uh, people who were, you know, in some capacity or another part of the co-op. And um, earlier in the plenary, um, do I need to go slower? Earlier in the plenary, um, Tim, I believe his name was, spoke about um, capacity issues. So since I, I came on three years ago, um, our the um, the group of advisor, advisors that were incubating us and like helping us get on our feet um, like, kind of like slowly like faded outward and uh, just recently this past uh, January I believe or in, maybe in November the, um, the president of our board um, moved back to Kenya uh, where he's from um, so over the over the years we've been consistently getting smaller and smaller and um, having a lot of these issues around capacity and having ways of um, complete our mission of creating jobs for ex-prisoners. Um, we found that it's very hard to create jobs um, when you're not making any money. <laughs> so um, with a group of people that um, primarily came from a community organizing background of you know, being on the ground and like working with the community, um, there was a disconnect between the current um, capitalistic model of making money and paying your employees and the community development cooperative mindset of you know try to um, you know work together in the community and you know find, find ways of doing it from the ground up without um, you know corporate um, help or what have you so that that all of those factors played into um, and, and, and you know, people moving over the years may make it difficult. So um, one thing to um, talk about, you know, to bring back to what the questions are, um, something to think about is, you know, one of the barriers uh, of entry was something that we, the ideology is something that has carried over for the co-op, but in order to completely fulfill our mission, we need to find ways of operating more like a business and less like a nonprofit. Um, so that one of the barriers I think is capacity building and being able to bring on new people and afford to pay those new people and find those ways. So um, overall Empower is a really cool project. It's still going on. Uh, we have uh, we share space um, where the after party will be. Uh, we make we still make biodiesel but it's on a very small scale and so currently we're talking with Epica about um, coming back together with Epica and finding ways of, you know, drumming up um, more life and, you know, getting the thing back on its feet. Eu sou Davida Leite Cooperativa, é uma cooperativa de mulheres, australianas em Boston, em Boston. I'm part of the Vida Verde uh, co-op, that is a uh, house cleaner co-op in Alston and Boston. A cooperativa Vida Verde, ela foi criada para ajudar as mulheres eh, que chegavam aqui não e não tinha trabalho. It was created to help women who arrived here and didn't have work. E eram, começavam a trabalhar em esquerdas de casas onde eram exploradas. And, uh, to to help them work in working situations where they were exploited. And a lot of them uh, were working with a lot of toxics and they got uh, a lot of health issues. I've been in the co-op for seven years, and now being pregnant, I'm in a privileged space to not be working with toxics. 
a cooperativa me dá todo o apoio aos clientes respeito a minha vontade de não querer usar um produto que vai fazer mal para a minha saúde e para o meu bebê and uh, the co-op gives us support and people understand our need to use uh, healthy clean products that will be uh, good for us and for my, my uh, baby. A cooperativa hoje conta com a ajuda de 23 membros. The co-op now has 23 members. E nós estamos num processo de seleção para 10 novos membros que vão começar a partir de 2013. And uh, we're in the process of taking on 10 more uh, members that will happen in 2013. We make our own products in our co-op and it's been tested by Tufts University. We, we train 60 people, more than 60 people. 600 people. And now the co-op uh, can count on 250 clients. So we work for ourselves, uh, um, all 23 members, um, and we just pay 5% to the co-op. Oh, uh, my name is Luz Mara, Sandra already said basically uh, a summary of the co-op. I'll be uh, coming up on my fifth year with the co-op in October. So in the beginning, some of the challenges were getting the clients to send us. Because in the beginning, you don't have any uh, inroad to the market. Uh, when I came on, uh, there was a grant for two years that was supporting the work. Then there were two more years of grants, so a total of four years. And when the grant ran out in the middle of the year, we started paying in 5% to the co-op. And then came up the issue of accountability because we and, and doing our finances, because we did our own finances in the co-op. Eu fiz por seis meses junto com uma das membros que era Kenya. I did it for six months along with another member named Kenya. E ela retornou para o Brasil. And she, but she went back to Brazil. E logo depois desses seis meses, a Sandra pegou. Eu acho que ficou por mais ou menos dois anos como nossa contadora. And then Sandra stepped up and for more than two years, two years, Sim. was the uh, was the finance accountant. And this is really important, um, this 5%, um, because since we don't speak, uh, we don't speak English fluently, we have a coordinator. And with that money, we also pay our, our space, our internet, our phone, and everything. That's basically what it is. Seem like a long time, but seven years went by very fast because of so many activities, 
that have happened, um, so many accomplishments that we have accomplished through hard work by the members, um, a lot of uh, sleepless nights, um, rainy and wet nights, uh, picketing and marching on uh, Beacon Hill um, in Massachusetts to as far as Washington DC. Um, uh, we were one of the first people or bodies that fought for that um, poor reform. Um, we did get some help from Africa at some point in time. I can't say whether it was the beginning, middle or the end. But we did get some help. Um, I'm proud to say, uh, un unlike some other people, it's never too good to remember who helped you uh, when you accomplish something, no matter how small it is. Um, I've been a, a political activist for the past seven years also. Um, besides the fight for the reform of uh, the three strikes and um, other injustice in our community as far as uh, Boston, the immediate city of Boston is concerned, um, as far as the short list of accomplishments that we have accomplished so far for the seven years that we have been in existence, one of our the most, the most, I would say, present thing that uh, reason why I'm here today that I was invited for is the coming of two co-ops, cooperatives that have joined together. Um, that's Mascosh and Boston the Worker Alliance to form a new cooperative. It's a green recycling cooperative. Um, this is groundbreaking reason why half of our um, cooperative is strictly Spanish. Speaking, and for good reasons. Um, funny thing, we forget that when politicians are looking to becoming power and get their votes, they know how to divide the people. Because divided, you conquer. Together, you unite, and you stand the ground where you cannot be moved. And half of uh, the group of our new co-op is fully Spanish-speaking. Uh, some English, but more Spanish than English. And that's a, that's a big thing because. Um, I myself, um, half Brazilian, half Venezuelan, my father's from Brazil, he's from Sao Paulo, my mother's from Caracas, Venezuela, and I can speak very little Portuguese nor Spanish, that is beyond my control because of my parents. Nevertheless, there's no reason for me to say that I can't learn to speak either of the two languages. But in Massachusetts, one of the things that the politicians do to have the races divide is, is because of language barrier. And language barrier, as we see, it is one of the biggest problems in the growth and the progress of our people here in different businesses, community, and even for the co-ops. Um, once we can identify that problem and deal with it to move forward, we will move forward much further and much greater. But um, our new cooperative is very much like some of the cooperatives that have been going, like the bad diesel that I've heard um, my uh, esteemed colleagues spoke about, and we would like to go a little further besides the biodiesel. Um, we would also like to have the recycling of um, biocompost and also electronics because we live in such a fast paced society. One of the things that we see on a daily basis is old televisions, computers, and the electronic equip equipment on the wayside. And um, there are a lot of foreign companies that come from outside of Massachusetts, I would say, as far as New York, Connecticut, and other places to recycle our stuff. That money is going out of Massachusetts, out of our neighborhood. <coughs> when we have our own, can keep that money and even service other people, neighboring places around us, and be a little stronger and have some more money in our community because the government only gives us so much. Only when there's an election, they resurface the roads. The fix lights, the fix the pavement, the sidewalk that we walk on around election time. But other than that, if we were to normally go and ask for these things, we wouldn't get it. Then the other the other trick is that they check by who votes on what street. If there isn't a certain amount of people voting from a particular street, that street gets nothing. In winter time, that is how we get our roads salted. If the people weren't voting from a particular street, it gets ignored. A lot of people don't know that, it's not aware of that. This is one of the things where we need to have, I strongly support and I have to be a part of a co-op that we can make a difference, a real difference, not just word of mouth, not just on the surface, but deeply. 
So I commend my colleagues that came before me and had their very, I would say, heartfelt stories. And this is my short story. Thank you, everybody.